If you do want to mount this somewhere else, I mean, you can, but this is where it's designed to go. So that wire is going under there. This one's for the heated bed, obviously. This ground is for that. So next, obviously, is going to help if we do the power supply. Don't pay too much attention to what I'm doing here because I, my design is a bit different to yours just because I didn't want to print the whole power supply case again and again and again to try and get it right. So yours is slightly improved over mine, but they work in pretty much the same way. Again, make sure everything is wired up before you start assembling it to the frame. You'll probably notice that on your power supply box, there's an extra tab at the top that I don't have. So on yours, there'll be a tab here that comes up and you only need that if you're gonna use the enclosure. That's just to help hold the panel in place and also for the panel to support the power supply. It just is a little bit better to have it supported top and bottom rather than just what I have. But mine's good enough for me and I wanted to just make yours a little bit better. All the wires should be routed along the inside of the frame, so make sure everything's on the inside, like so. So that's the power supply, and you can see mine's a little wobbly because you have a superior design to me. Lucky you! But, you know, this will do for me. For the control board, pretty much the same as the other two parts that we've just put in. A couple of screws, a couple of T-slot nuts, and that's all you need. The control board I'm using here is the Ramps 1.4 with the Arduino Mega 2560. Well, clone of the Arduino Mega 2560. If you have a different control board and you'd like a mounting bracket that's similar to this, then you can let me know which one you're after, what the hole spacings are, and I'll try and do what I can to get you a bracket that fits in the same way. I believe most CAD is available for these designs as a lot of them are open source. So we put that on that side, that on that side. We want to try and make it about vertical just so it looks about right. And then obviously you tighten it down. So there you go. Now you have your SSR power supply and control board all in ready to go. In the next episode, we'll get on with the end stops. In fact, should we do those now? Should we just do the end stops now? For the end stops, all you need is this lot. Again, as always, it's listed on the drawing. What you need, surprise, surprise. Mine are a little bit broken, actually, my little brackets, because they didn't print very well, but they work, so that's good enough. So what you have here is basically a little bracket, the switch, a longer screw and a shorter screw. The longer screw goes through this section and the shorter screw goes through this section. So if you look at another one I've already done, either of them, these are slightly different. Depends how you want to put them on. But for this one, this one we're going to be is going to be the Z axis. So we want it out this side, but this way up. So this is, if you can see, so you see how this is going to mount on here, that's going to clip on there, like that, and that's going to point down so that that touches that screw. Ooh, oh dear. So that way round, that way round, and that way round. So the short screw goes through this side, and here, this goes on here. This tightens on here. And then you tighten it when it's on. So for positions of the end stops, there's obviously three end stops. So for the positions of the end stops, there's obviously three positions. So this is the first position for an end stop, just here. That clicks on there and then sits about like that. So let's get a screw in here. And not on the bottom. This is going to be a bit difficult from this angle. 
Uh, we're in. No, we're not. Uh, uh. Oh, wrong one. Yes. So that goes, well, you can change the position where you want it, but somewhere about there probably. And that contacts up the top here. That's good like that. So we'll just, if you've printed them well, then this nut will jam against the back and you won't have to hold it as you tighten it. But they don't have to be that tight really. There we go, that's not gonna, that's not gonna go anywhere. The second position for an end stop is here like this, and that's gonna be control the Y axis. So again, screw through there and a nut through the other side. The third end stop goes up on the Z axis. I'm just gonna mount it here for now just to show you how it should fit. But that will go on there. And if you've mounted it correctly, you might have to twist it just slightly. There you go. So that will contact. So you want it about that angle. And as before, you just need a screw and a nut to hold it in place. Now you've got your end stops in, you can use the cables that came with them to wire them up to the control board, which you now have installed. Uh, some of them might need an extension depending on where you've mounted the control board and where you've mounted the sensors. This one you could put at the front if that makes it easy for you. I might have benefited from doing that actually. But yeah. In fact, that's a really good idea. Why have I done it all at the back? <laughs> I thought the back was a good idea all the time. If I had, if I'd have put this at the front, then that would be really easy to access from the door and with the switch at the front and everything. What? <laughs> Think I made a boo boo slightly. The whole way doing it, I've always designed it so that it was at the back, and that just seemed like a logical place to have it. But now I'm beginning to think that actually probably should have been at the front. So if you want to undo that screw, fortunately all these things have a hole in, move the screw to the front, move your sensor to the front, and then they might be a bit easier. I've not really thought it completely through, so maybe there's a still a good reason why they're at the back, but if you want to do that, that might be a good idea. Right, so that's it for your SSR, power supply, control box, and all your end stops. You have pretty much everything now to get everything wired in. I'm not gonna go through all the details of how you wire stuff into the ramps control board. I'm gonna leave that up to you. If you do have questions, you can consult the drawing, the electronics diagram drawing, which has some help for you. Or if you're using an E3D V6, there'll be some guides with that as well. But I think there's plenty of information out there to enable you to wire up a ramps control board. Next, we're gonna be having a look at the firmware. So the specific firmware for this printer, for this thickness of bed, this heater, this power supply, and this extruder setup. If you do have slightly different components, slightly different parts, slightly different heater, well, even a slightly different room temperature, then you might need to, well, you'll need to do your PID value separately, but the broad scale of the firmware will be fine for pretty much everyone. So I'll go through that and show you where the parts are that you might need to edit or anything like that. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the firmware. One more thing. The control box screen. I've got a little enclosure for mine that I designs. Quite nice, I think. I just plugged it. Just like normal. Yeah, it's not quite right. Yeah, there you go. We're done now. Bye!